All right. To show you guys how to do a problem like this, you guys remember in the other problem to get rid of i, we just multiply by i, right? Can you say i, times i? i. Oh. To get rid of i in the bottom, we just multiply by i. So let's apply that same thinking to this problem. If I multiply by i on the top and the bottom, I've got to put parentheses around my binomial. Then I have to apply distributive property. Well, if I multiply by i on both sides, I'm going to get i squared, which would get rid of it here. But then I'm going to multiply by i times negative 1. So therefore, i is still going to be on the bottom, right? So if you, have, um, if you have a binomial or a complex number <coughs> as your denominator, you can't simply just divide or multiply by i like the other problem. What we're going to do is talk about the conjugate. Multiply by the conjugate. Okay, so there's two multiplication problems I want to go over real quick. Because this is where a lot of students make their mistake. Okay? If you guys notice, there's a difference between these two problems, right? These two, I'm talking about the multiplication problems right now. There's a difference between these two. These two are exactly the same. These two are exactly the same, except for the addition and subtraction symbol, correct? These are what we call conjugate pairs. They're the exact same, but one, one is you're adding the terms and one you're subtracting the terms. So they're your conjugate pairs. Let's look at what happens when I multiply conjugate pairs compared to when I multiply the same thing again. So let's multiply this real quick. I'm just going to do FOIL. So I do negative 3i, um, then I have plus 1, uh, minus 3i, and then um, plus 9i squared. Right? When I do my FOIL for this, when I combine my like terms, I get 1 minus 6i uh, minus 9. So I get negative 8 minus 6i. Right? i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times 9 is negative 9. So when I do that math, I get negative 6 minus 6i. Well, ladies and gentlemen, do I still have an i right there? Yes. Let's notice, let's take a look though. If we make a quick little distinction, if I change this from a plus, to multiplying it by 1 with a negative, let's see how that changes my multiplication problem. So I'm still going to use FOIL. Same thing. Negative 1 times uh, negative 3i is, not, is a positive 3i. Then I have positive 1. Then I have minus 3i. And then I have a negative 9i squared. Very similar to what I did over here, except the, except the signs are different. However, what we notice when multiplying by conjugate pairs is when I combine these two, I'm now going to get 0i, which is 0. So therefore, I'm only going to be left with 1 plus 9. As i squared goes to negative 1, negative 1 times negative 9 is positive 9. Therefore, I get 10. So do you guys see what happens when I multiply by the conjugate pairs? Do I get, do I get rid of my i? Yes. So when you're left with dividing complex numbers and you have a binomial on the bottom, what you're now going to want to do is multiply by the conjugate pair. So multiplying by i is not going to be enough when you have a binomial. You're going to have to multiply by the conjugate pair. So when multiplying by the conjugate pair, we notice that we said this went to 10. And then you have to just multiply on top. 8i times negative 1 is negative 8i. 8i times negative 3i is going to be a negative 24i squared divided by 10, which is the number is with your binomial multiplied by its conjugate. That was the math work I already did there. So now we just need to simplify this. i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times 24 is a going to be a positive 24 minus 8i divided by 10. And then just remember, I told you guys to always simplify this, right? Do not leave it in this form. We want to make sure we write it as a complex number. So therefore, I'm going to divide the 10 into both of those terms. By reducing this, you could say you have 12 fifths minus 4 fifths i. Question, yes? Huh? I divided by 2 in the top and the bottom. So negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. And 5 divided by 2 is 5. Because let's simplify this. 
what is this? Can you simplify two fourths? Yeah, you can divide the top and bottom by one. The same two fourths is the same thing as one half, right? So you divide it by two on the top and the bottom. You don't always have to divide by two though. What about three ninths? Can you simplify three ninths? Yeah, that's the same thing as one third. So if I give you negative eight divided by ten, what is the largest number that goes both into negative eight or and into ten? And you could say two. So you divide by two, and what you're left with, negative four over five. Okay. Yes. The answer what? I want to answer like that. I want your answer in complex number form. Conjugate? Because remember, remember I told you, I did the two multiplication problems. I did the multiplication problem here and then over there. No. Well, let's take a look. Oh, let me finish the video and then I'll explain it real quick.